472-5163 with an access code 658-9317. Put that in your phone, take the old one out because you'll never get an answer on the old one. And that's the new number for everything that goes on here at the church. Iron Man, are you on? I hope so. I hope so. I still would know. The man cave is always closed at my home. Okay. But I always get happy when they overwear. But I'm treated like a little queen. <laughs> Thank you, man. Stop and pray. The toast by Sister Benny on Tuesday evening at 8.30. Y'all need a little prayer. Okay, Bible study. Two times on Wednesday. One at 1130. Most of my pastor didn't get on. Yeah. It is exciting. You learn something. And guess what? On Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we're starting a new king. And I'm doing it. We're doing Hezekiah. Hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully, you know, we got to do the bad ones. We started with a good one. Let's see what Hezekiah got to offer us. Okay? So get on, because it is a learning experience. And once you get through the king, and we get through all of that, if you don't say you haven't learned something, something is wrong. Okay, birthdays will be celebrated in May. And that party is going to be spectacular because we're taking three months. And all you people are going to be celebrated at the end of May. King of kings. Lord, we know you as Lord of Lord. Lord, we know you as our provider, Lord. You are our peace, Lord. You are our joy, Lord. Lord, we come today for this celebration, Lord, for who you are and what you have done for us. Lord, you went to the cross. Lord, you went to the grave, but you didn't stay there. Lord, you got up with all power in your hand, Heavenly Father. And you've given us a right to the tree of life, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We come before you with thanksgiving, Lord. Lord, we can't be sorrowful today. We are thankful, Lord, because you did it for us, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord. Lord, look at what you have done for us, and we realize it, Lord, that you are so good. Lord, we thank you for those that are here today to celebrate your rising, Lord. Lord, you're so good to us. Hallelujah, Jesus, you are so, yes. so good to us, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah. Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For those that are sick and shut in, Lord, we ask you to go into the rooms of the hospitals, Lord, and heal them, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our miracles throughout our congregation, Lord. Healing in your house. We thank you for that, Lord. Those who are suffering, Lord, who need comfort, Lord, we ask you to go into their homes and their hearts, Lord, and comfort them, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that is about to come forth, Lord. We ask that we open up our hearts, our ears, and our understanding, that we can receive the word, Lord. You rose for us. You rose for us today, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Bibles to Matthew 27, Matthew chapter 27. And if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand and our and our ushers will bring you a Bible. I see one. Anybody else that doesn't have a Bible? Just keep your hand up for a second. Okay, something great. Anyone else? So, and then also it's on the screen. I'm hoping you can read that. Praise God. 27 and 19. I'm going to uh, 
give you this one major verse first. And then uh, we'll go on from there. And would you say amen when you have it? Amen. Amen. I don't know if everybody has it. I still hear some pages and I hear a couple of faint amens. Usually that's I'm looking for it. That's Matthew 27th chapter, 19th verse. And would you stand on your feet as we read and respect God's word? Matthew 27, 19. And this is how it reads. This is Pilate that I'm talking about. Pilate was a governor at that time uh, when Jesus was uh, judged, charged, put to death. And I'll give you the good news at the end of this message. 27 and 19. 27th chapter, 19th verse of Matthew. And this is how it reads. While he, that's Pilate, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife said to him, saying, have nothing to do with that just man. I'm reading from the New King James Version. With that just man. For I have, she says, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Mm -hmm. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. And the title of this message is A Dream or a Nightmare of Reality. Right. Oh a Dream or a Nightmare of Reality. You may be seated. Has, has anyone in the building ever had one of those dreams? It wasn't a nightmare, but it was a dream that stayed with you the whole day. Oh, yeah. And have you ever had one of those dreams? I don't know what's happening up here. This is a off. Bring me another one if you have it. However, have you ever had one of those dreams that just, it just didn't sit with you right? Come on, Pastor. Come on. It just didn't sit with you right. Have you ever had one of those dreams that truly was a nightmare? Have you ever had one of those dreams that you were just falling and just before you hit the ground you woke up? Come on, Pastor. Come uh -huh. You ever had a dream where you heard music and ended up waking up and it was somebody partying next door? <laughs> you ever had one of those dreams that they were, I mean, your dream was terrible. You were in it and maybe, uh, maybe you thought it was just a dream like a fight or something, and you end up getting in a fight that day. I'm telling you all the dreams I had. And have you ever just had a nightmare? Yes. I mean, several times a nightmare. And I, re I remember waking up crying and sweating one time. And I can't even remember what that dream was, but I remember sweating and crying. But it wasn't good. Well, this is Pilate's wife. She came and she sent him a message. She was uh, trying to make sure that he got this particular message, Pilate. He had Jesus' life in the palm of his hands. Actually, the priests, the elders, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees, and all of those that were siding with them uh -huh. were jealous, were envious, 
to the point of hate on Jesus. And they were doing everything that they could to block his progress. I'm here to tell you this morning that jealousy is a terrible thing and it can get really out of hand if you let it. That's right, Pastor. Come on. And I was sent a question this week and the question was a great question and I haven't answered it with the person yet. However, the question was if the prophets and the Pharisees and all uh, those people that didn't like Jesus, I'm paraphrasing the question, if they had the same religion, and I said religion, they had the same religion, why were they so far apart with Jesus? Great question. And that's because God the Father never planned it that way. God the Father wanted the children of Israel to be one. Wanted all of the priests as they went down the line to be one. I remember when we were in the minor prophets. We saw all, we were studying all the minor prophets. And as we went through those minor prophets, help me Holy Ghost. As we went through those minor prophets, those prophets were giving God's word to the people. Because the people that were supposed to be in that religion, I'll say religion again, didn't have a relationship Mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. And so at that time, as time went along, God wanted us to be right with him. That's right. And we just couldn't get it right. And the prophets kept coming Mm -hmm. and kept coming and kept prophesying. And they just could not get it right. Uh And so the Lord said, "Ah, I'm going to have to do something. The Lord said, I'm going to have to come down in human flesh in the form of a son, the son of God. And he did that. He took off his royal diadem. And he put on human flesh. You know, this stuff ain't going to last. This human flesh is not going to last. And so somebody had to come. And God brought himself here to conquer this human flesh. Uh Jesus was perfect. Yes, he was. was. We'll never be perfect but we'll be perfect with a new body when we get to heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just want to make that clear. And so, this dream or nightmare that Pilate's wife had, that's because those people did not know who Jesus truly was. That was the problem. But she had the sense enough through a dream. I don't know. It may have, been a night, may have been a nightmare to her. Because she says right here, she suffered many things. Today, that day, in a dream, because of him, Jesus. What is it about Jesus that's so powerful, so magnificent, so mighty? What makes people come out to church? What makes people praise him? Where 11 men plus Paul spread the gospel throughout the whole world and here we are with the gospel in our hearts. Uh And so we come out to praise God because of the gospel. What, What made us do that? Why are we doing it? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever took time? Have you ever just Sit down and meditate on who Jesus is. Come on, Pastor. This yellow paper, look at what you're focusing on. Make sure you know who Jesus is. 
I'm here to tell you today, make sure you know who Jesus is. Now, Pilate had a problem right here. And he, the problem that he had is, uh, it's in a particular scripture, Matthew 5, 17, not on your paper. However, it says, do not think, this is what Jesus said, I'm reading from the NIV, it says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law, that was the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. He didn't come to abolish the law. He didn't come to kick out the law. The, the law, those Bible scholars that are in the building, they know that the law is the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. And, and the prophets are the Old Testament. Amen? Amen? At least most of them. Because you've got the disciples that were prophets also. Yes. However, he says here, I didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, Jesus said, but I came to fulfill them. Come on. So everything in the Old Testament, it just goes over to the New Testament with Jesus and a prize comes along with it. Does anybody know what the prize is? Grace. Yeah. Grace is the prize. Yeah. Yeah. And so when he got up from the grave, grace was the thing that he gave us. Yeah. You know what, the, what what's, you know what grace is inside of? Grace is inside of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. The goodness of God. Do you know what the Holy Spirit does? It leads us and it guides us. It makes a way out of no way. Oh, when things get rough, when sicknesses come on your body, you may be sick enough, ready to go home. We don't really know, but we pray, if it's God's will, that you'll be okay. But if it's not God's will and you're saved, then you will be absent from the body present with the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I'm not afraid of that phrase. I'm not afraid of grace. I'm not afraid of the Holy Ghost. I'm not afraid of the goodness or the gift that comes from God. I'm not afraid of that. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Ooh, have mercy, Jesus. I'm ready for that. Yeah. Are you ready? Jesus yeah. says right here, he says, right here, he says, Get to know me because I didn't come to abolish anything in the Bible. I came to fulfill it. Yeah, 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 so all the way back to Moses, yeah. all the way from the beginning of Genesis uh -huh. points towards Jesus. Yeah. My, my, my. Everything after the Bible, everybody in this building right now has a future. Yeah. You may not know what it is, yeah. but God does. And through Jesus Christ, you can ask, through Jesus Christ, bless my future. Yes. Just that simple. Bless me, O oh Lord. Keep me, O oh Lord. Watch over me, O oh Lord. Uplift me, O oh Lord. My money ain't right. Fix my money. Fix me so I can fix my money. Oh Lord, please do that. Yeah. My children are right, are, aren't right. Lord, fix me so I can fix my children. Right. You can do that because you have all things in the palm of your hand. Yeah. Just because of grace. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. I yes. guess I can sit down right now. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, grace is nothing like grace. And then you know what? Oh, have mercy. You know what goes along with that? Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you can't get grace. Come on. Because you're acting up. Come on. Sometimes you can't get grace. Yeah. Because you're in ugly situations with an ugly attitude. Sometimes you don't deserve grace. But God fixed it because in that same package, He put mercy. Yeah. Who have Come mercy? On. Have mercy right yeah. now. Yeah. Have mercy. So God says to us, is this a dream or is this a nightmare? <sighs> That's something for us, us, all of us to think of. Is this a nightmare or is this goodness a dream? 
It, it can be beautiful, or you can make it ugly. What you going to do? What are you going to do? That was that message you preached not too long ago. Praise God. So listen, I'm going to tell you today about the most negative day in history and the most positive day in history. You might not think so. You may be in a religion, but I'm here to tell you that this is not a religion. Everybody got that? This is a relationship. Man calls it a religion. But God calls it a relationship. That's right. And when we receive the relationship, that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The grace and the mercy and the goodness and the peace and the yes. joy and the love and the happiness. I can keep on going. Yes. Because if you want your life to be good, try Jesus. Yes, 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 if you yes. tried everything and you haven't tried anything else and you don't have anything else you can try, try Jesus. Yes. Yes. The devil doesn't want you to know that. He doesn't want you to give that, get that. He doesn't want you to live that. And it's not like you got to jump through all kind of hoops to just be a Christian or a believer or saved. You don't have to do all of that. Come it's on. not about me wearing a big old cross on my neck carrying a big old Bible in my hand. It's not about that. It's your personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Come what on, you going to do? Yes, yes, yes. Is yes, it a yes. dream or is it a nightmare? Uh -huh. Well, I've been dreaming about this for years. I remember when I was in a nightmare, though, because I was living in a question mark. Come on, Pastor, take your time. Yeah. I was living... Uh, I die, where am I going? Come on. What's going to happen? Yeah. Lord, am I going to be here for these three kids? Am I going to be here for my wife? Come on, Pastor. Lord, what's, what's going I was living in a question mark. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh -huh. Been in church all my life. Well. They were preaching things that I'm saying right now, and I didn't realize what was given, being given to me at the time. Amen. But when I got, oh, have mercy. Yes. But when I got the message from Christ, yes. you better get your life together. I mean, loud and clear. Just, just trying to be right. Read my Bible. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just like folks that have their life, I was just like folks that have their life just all over the place. Uh -huh. You know, when they, when they try to get right, then they go grab their Bible and they start reading. Mm -hmm. They start reading from Genesis. They start reading the Old Testament. And the Old Testament will beat you to death. <laughs> Say that. But I tell people all the time, get the book of John and read that first. Uh -huh. And let God tell you how much he loves you. Yeah, come on, Pastor. I was one of those guys. I, got, I, I went and got revelations first. <laughs> I wasn't scared of Revelation like a lot of people are. They're scared of it. But I wasn't. I got it and I started reading. And I got to the part about Jezebel. And I don't know how God does this. But he makes the words just stand out to you. Oh, he illuminates them so powerfully with the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And what I read, I have... The Bible said, I have gave Jezebel space. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to kill her children. That was for me. That was for me. And when I read that, I started walking. You all heard my testimonies, a lot of you, before I started walking. I just couldn't get over it. I started walking. Anybody know anything about L.A.? I was... Uh, 9th Street and um, Olympic at UPS. That's where I was reading it in my office. Yeah, it is. At UPS, I had to just run. I had to get out. I had to start walking. And when I finished walking and crying and calling out to the Lord and asking him to forgive me yes. Come for on. the mess that I did, yep, 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 yep. the mess that I was doing, the people that I hurt, when I asked him, 
I was all the way down to L.A. High. Oh, man, you in trouble. <laughs> I asked him to forgive me. And when I got down there, I said, I gotta walk back. I turned around and I thanked the Lord all the way back. Yes, yes, and I've been living yes. good ever since. Yes. Yes. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that I, I didn't have problems. But every time I had a problem, I went to the package of grace. Yes, Come on. Yes. Some of the times I had to I had to just stand still and know that he was God because I needed not grace, I needed mercy. Yes, 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 yes. So I look at the Bible and, and, and how Jesus went through this negative portion of history. People want to throw it out the window. They want to just kind of push it out and forget about it. And, and, and then when they then then when they need it, they want to pull it back in. On, it, it, it doesn't work that way. Come on. The Bible says here here with Pilate, it says in John. Uh, now we got Matthew that I'm in. And let me let me read Matthew first. Let me just read this to you. It says, Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? This is what they were saying. This is what people were saying. Jesus said to him, it is as you say. Mm -hmm. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he, but he answered him not one word. So the governor marveled. Everybody say the governor marveled. The governor the governor marveled. marveled. Now remember that. Remember that. And then it goes on to say, "Whom do you want me to release?" He was asking the uh, he was asking the priests and all of uh, all of the Sadducees and Pharisees. Everybody was around. That was feast time. That was the time where they had the feast of the Passover. Yeah. So people were from other nations were there. All of the Jewish people had came together. And so all of this ruckus was outside, all about Jesus. Uh, he hadn't did anything. He went through different judgment halls. Right. And they were accusing him. And it was all orchestrated. And, and, the, and the priest and the, and the elders... And all those fast Pharisees and Sadducees, even some of the scribes that just wrote this stuff, they were accusing him of something that he did not do. He was innocent. Yes, 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 yes. And so we look at this, and, and, and I look at what Pilate says. Pilate therefore said unto him, are you, are you a king? Jesus answered and said, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause and I was born for this cause and I have come into the world that I may bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is, listen to this close now, everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why the churches are not full. Everyone who hears my voice, come on, come on. they know the truth. They know what Jesus is all about. Well, And listen, I'm not busting up here. I'm just inviting. If there's anybody in the building who does not have Jesus, come on, you're missing out on the best relationship that you could ever have. That's right, that's right. Jesus is the closest thing to God the Father. And the beautiful thing is, and let me say it right now, the beautiful thing is we have to go through Jesus to get to the Father. Come on. But even more beautiful and wonderful than that, we realize who the Father truly is. Yes, yes, He's yes. Jesus. Yes. That's who he is. Come on. Jesus that came down in through. He came down.
down to save us yeah. come on, come on. and to fill us yeah. with his spirit. Yes, he came down. He gave us. See, the reason God did it this way, a lot of pastors don't tell this. A lot of them don't know it. But the reason he did that is because God got too holy for us. Quiet in the building right now. Well, well. Yeah. He was too holy. He can't be around sin. It just, if, if, if sin got close enough to him, it would burn up. My Lord. That's why he guided them in the wilderness for 40 years with a pillar of smoke mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. in the morning, in the daytime, yeah. and a pillar of fire, fire. at night. Yes. Come on. Whenever he got angry, I just read a few weeks ago, he got angry with some people that came against Moses, 250. Mm -hmm. These were all... Actually, really, they're all relatives because they were all Jewish. Mm -hmm. And he got angry with them. And those 200 people, Moses said, you stand over there uh -huh. and I'll stand over here. Right. And God said to Moses, put them over there because I'm going to consume them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when Moses said to them, yeah. God is angry with you. God just burn them up. Burn them up. And you wonder why people are stressing so bad all the time. Satan is trying. God is, is backing up. He doesn't see sin. He doesn't. Thank God for Jesus. Yes, because we all God. have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. But because of Jesus, yep, yep. we're not burned up. Yes, we're not no. consumed. Yes. You ever seen any people stressing? I mean, stressing. Come on, Pastor. And you call them or you come by or whatever, and they just tell you all of their problems. They just and you just don't want to say, well, you need you. You know, you want to say that. Right, right. But you gotta you gotta remember who Jesus is. Yeah. He's full of love. Yeah. He's love first. You gotta remember who God is. He's love first. And because God loved us so much, uh -huh. he doesn't consume us. He doesn't burn us up. Yes. But sometimes he backs off and let the devil do what he wants. And when he does that, he hasn't given it. See, the devil got to get permission from God. Can he do that? Come on, Pastor. And sometimes our heart just gives, gives permission to the devil. <sighs> Come on, take your time. I'm talking about, in this point, the most negative time in history. And some of the most negative times in history is some of the most negative times in our lives. Amen. Amen? Amen. So how do I deal with that? Well, I give my heart to the Lord, and I say, Lord, take me. Use me in your service. Fix my situation. Lord, you are a great God, and you are a powerful God. And so I have to bear witness of the truth. I have to tell people the truth. Yes. You have to tell people the truth. In spite of your attitude, you know when you get angry, you know when you get upset, you know when you you're, you're, you feel so just, you just tired of it. Come on, come on, take your time. Like they used to say, I'm so tired. You can get on my last nerve. <laughs> you know they used to say that. Yes, yes, you Remember yes. when your parents used to say that? Boy, I'm going to beat you into tomorrow or into the next day. I had a complex by being black. My mama used to say, I thought, boy, I'll beat the black off. <laughs> so I always thought it was negative. But thank God I met him. And he told me I was beautiful. Yes. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. I can attest to the goodness of grace. Uh -huh. I can attest to the goodness of mercy. mercy. I've had a gun pulled on me. Yes. Things like that. Worse than that. Come on, All of that stuff. And I'm not... I'm just telling you that I am a re I'm a living witness of the reality of Jesus Christ. Yes. And if anything is in your lives like that, ha! Ah, yes. Sometimes parents suffer with their children. Yes. Yes. And God just says, spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen. Come on, come on. 
Sometimes you don't want to get that man. You don't want to get that angry. And if you ever do, you leave for a minute. You go sit in the car. You get away. Because you don't want to chastise when you're up there. And I don't mean up there with heaven, but when you're up in the air. When you're all anxious and freaked out and getting ready to just blow a fuse. But God says here, uh, he, he says, I have you in my hands if you let me. And if you let, if you let me hold on to you in a situation that is so negative, I will fix the situation. I will go before you. I will give you the words to say, and I will give you peace. Yes. That's one of the wonderful things that God does. He is the Prince of Peace, Jesus, and he'll give you peace in every situation of your life. Yes. So, uh, can you, for just a moment, can you turn in your Bibles to Psalms 22? All right. Psalms 22. And I want to give you something. That, that was so beautiful in the Psalms. Psalms, the 22nd uh, division of Psalms, and start at the 14th verse. Psalms 22 and 14. I had it marked, but I lost it. Uh, here we are. Start at the at the. 14 verse, and listen to 14 through 18. And, and, and this is, I'm going way back to the Old Testament, this is David speaking as he was being chased by Saul. And it says here, it's not going to be on the screen, that's why I had you turn to it. It's up there. Oh, it's up there, thank you Lord. Amen. God for the technicians up there. He says, I'm poured out like water. This is David talking. And there's a point to this, so just hold on. I'm poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. Sound like a messed up situation, right? It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like pot shear. In other words, broken ceramic. Yeah. My tongue clings to my jaw or to the roof of my mouth, some versions say. Mm -hmm. You brought me to the dust of death. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say, for dogs have surrounded me. Now just, just imagine the crucifixion. Dogs have surrounded me. The, congreg uh, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. Enclosed me. The pierced, they pierced my hands and my feet. Remember this is David talking, right? I can count all my bones. They look as, uh, they look and they stare at me. They drive, they have divided my garments among them. And for my clothing, they have cast lots. Somebody tell me how David recited precisely God's words over 1,200 years before Jesus was born. Recited them. Some of it was what Jesus was looking at them doing, mm -hmm. and some of it was what he said. Mm -hmm. But over 1,200 years ago, <laughs> I mean before that time, Jesus was 2,000 uh, 2, years ago, and over 1,200 years was David. Mm -hmm. And David was running from Saul in the wilderness, living in caves, living in the wilderness, living in the mountains, living in the desert, hiding from the armies of Saul, and he prayed this prayer. And here it is 1,200 years later, and he prayed, and, and the Lord Jesus, his distant relative or ancestor, after that long, says the same things 
and the same things happen. That's something to think about. This is David speaking these same words that Jesus saw and spoke while he was on the cross. How did David describe the Lord? Jesus, total, how did he, how did he, he describe the total feelings of the Lord while he hung on the cross? Come on. What was the dream? Was it a dream or was it a nightmare? Well, for David, it was a nightmare because they were coming to kill him. Oh, uh, the, the Lord, it wasn't a nightmare. It was a dream for us to realize that he is giving his whole life for each and every one of us to take personally every day that you wake up in the morning. I'm just telling you what I do. I don't know what you do, but every morning I get up and I ask the Lord. Well, I tell him first, thank you for a day that I've never seen before. That's right. Thank yeah. you for the goodness of my eyes opening. Yeah. I can hear, Lord. I know my house is quiet, but my but I can hear. I can hear every little thing. <laughs> Lord, thank you for the activities of my limbs. Yeah. Lord, thank you for me even me being able to walk to my to my prayer closet or my 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 place of, of praying. Yeah. Lord, the pray, place that I come to you every morning. Thank you for blessing this particular place that I know I could feel you because I prayed here so many times. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. David here is praying to the Lord. Sometimes it was early in the morning all through the Psalms. The Psalms are poems and songs, and they go by divisions. And, and, they, and David had prayed all of the songs that he wrote, prayed all of the poems that he wrote. All the way through Psalms, those are his prayers. Ah, oh, I wish I could log my prayers. First lady, first lady Debbie used to log her pr prayers. Come on. One day I found in the closet a stack that high of those little those little square folders, and she just she she didn't she kind of like scribbled, but she knew what it was. But I didn't know what it was. But all I could do, I remember that I grabbed those things and and I started just reading through, reading through. And I said, all I could see was, <sighs> that was part of it. Sonny, Frank, Buck, Daylon, Kimia, Ramika, Jesus, 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 Lord, help, Lord, help, Lord. I couldn't throw them away because those were prayers. Yeah. Asking for peace. Yeah. Asking for grace. Hallelujah. Asking for mercy. Hallelujah. Asking for goodness. Asking for joy. Yeah. Asking the Lord. Oh, I remember I got one that just started saying, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for Daylon. Thank you for Kimya. Thank you for, we had so many things that we could thank him for because we realized who held our hearts in his hand. Yeah. yeah. No, this is not a religion. This is a relationship. Yes. Jesus came down for a relationship for each and every one of us. So yes. Uh, look at your paper. It says, no man can avoid making a decision about Christ. Y'all didn't get that. Let me just tell you real quick. Pilate couldn't make a decision about Jesus. He kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. He got the, the message from his wife. He's still going back and forth. He, and he's going back asking the same old question. Are you a king? And they didn't get it. The priests were right there. The, see, they had a situation. Here was the situation. With the Romans, they could not kill an innocent Roman. Everybody got that? Yeah. Remember when Paul's, you Bible scholars, remember when Paul was captured? Yeah. And they were going to kill him. Yeah. And he said, how can you kill a Roman? An uh, innocent Roman. Yeah. And they got to jumping around all crazy. Next thing you know, see, Paul was half Jewish and half Roman. Mm -hmm. And so when, they, when Paul used that, he, he just told about the Roman part. They could look at him and tell he was Jewish. But they told, he told them about the Roman part. And they got to running around. And so when they found out that he was Roman, 
They all took the chains off. They all apologized and let him go. That's right. Come on. The Jews had a law that they couldn't kill an innocent man. So they went to the Romans. That's why they went to the governor, Pilate. And when Pilate got the word, Pilate knew that the Roman government also said that you can't kill anybody that's innocent. So he went back and forth. He even sent Jesus to, to, to Herod. And Herod thought Jesus was a joke. So he laughed and he said, I just want you to show me uh, 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 some magic. And, and Jesus said nothing to him because he had no respect for him. Yeah. You know why he didn't have any respect for him? Because he, he was the one who cut off Herod's head. Right. And Herod, I'm sorry, he was the one who cut off, cut off John's head. And, Herod, and John was, Herod's, uh, was Jesus' cousin. Jesus had no respect for him. He wanted to make a joke out of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so what the Romans were trying to do, they were trying, uh, what Pilate was trying to do, the, he was trying to make a way to get out of this. Right. And when Herod sent it back to him, something happened in that. Herod and Rome, uh, Pilate and Roman, uh, I'm sorry, Pilate and Herod were in, in, had enmity between each other. They didn't really like each other. But over this, they became good friends. Yeah. On, they came on. together. Yeah. And so the Lord is so special. You all that are having dinners, you all that are, are going through things with family members, you may have in, enmity. They may, well, in some cases, they may be your enemy. <laughs> However, you need to straighten that stuff out. You don't have to say nothing. You just start treating that person with love. That's right. The love of Christ. Yeah. That's right. And when that when that happens, it's like pouring. What does the Bible say? Like pouring hot coals on their head. And the Bible will make that situation all right. Doesn't mean you got to be buddy buddy or run together. No, you just love them and pray for them. Amen. Right. Amen. And so the saints were praying, but this was God's plan ultimately, wasn't it? Come on, yeah. And so the goodness of this is that the decision that, that uh, Pilate couldn't make, he ended up, uh, they had a stupid law. I just have to say it like that. Let me just, let me just talk like I'm, I was raised, not like I went to school. <laughs> However, they had a really crazy law. And that law was feast time. They would give the, the Jewish people, showing how silly they were, one criminal, mm -hmm. they would set him free. And they chose this guy named Barabbas, Amen. which was a murderer. Mm -hmm. Thief, a murderer. Yeah. And they chose, Pilate went out and he was saying, listen, which one do you want? Do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? Barabbas. Mm -hmm. And they were screaming, the Pharisees, the High priests, the uh, scribes, the, Sadduc the Sadducees, they were just, they got the whole crowd just going. I mean, they were just, and you know how we've had riots. You know how people get, they just want to, they will just want to just tear up stuff. And it got to that point. So, so Pilate got scared and he said, well, uh, I'll give you Barabbas. And they were just hollering, thank you. And he, then he got his little thing of water and he washed his hands and he said, I'm washing my hands of this thing. And they went on and guess what they said? He said, this, Pilate said, this is on your heads. And those people said, they can be on my head, we don't care, we don't care, and even on our children, our children's children. They don't even know what they said. Come on, come on. Because that's what's happening to us now. Amen. Yes, we're not Jewish. But if God in his grace, he gave it to the blacks. He gave it to the Spanish, the Asians, and the whites. On, but one thing God does not do, he doesn't force anything on anybody. That's right. He gives you a choice. Yeah. 
And Pilate had a choice. Isn't it amazing that he took a, a, a murderer over Jesus? Isn't it amazing? Listen to what Bi Barabbas' name means. It means son of the father. Y'all hear that? Barabbas means son of the father. And they wanted the son of a mur murderer instead of the true son of the father. They chose sin over grace. They chose sin over mercy. They, know, they chose sin over joy. They chose sin over peace. They, they chose sin over Jesus. They, they chose sin over all of that ugliness. So I get to this point where it says the most positive day in history. Look at the second fill-in right under that. It says God's eternal plan, listen to me, never denies, man, uh, denies man's freedom of choice. God's eternal plan never denies man's freedom of choice. They chose which way they wanted to go. They chose that the Lord wasn't good enough for them. They chose that a murderer was better than anything that God could ever present to them. They chose that they would not have anything to do with Jesus all because of jealousy. They chose it because of envy. They chose it because of their arrogance. They chose it because of their ugliness. They chose it because... They were so weak in a religion instead of choosing a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How can I get into that relationship? Well, I chose the Lord God first. I chose Jesus Christ. Yes, I did. And then I chose with a choice that I, that I wanted the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that watches over me, the Holy Ghost that that charges me yeah. and yeah. charges me up and makes me want more of what I'm asking for anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So Praise I find Lord. out yeah. that in the in the book of Mark it says, "Now when he rose early in the morning, early. Ah, early. it says the first day of the week he yeah. appeared to Mary Magdalene, yeah. out of whom he had cast seven demons, and then." Matthew 28, 18, it goes on and says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority, and this is after he all rose, authority. All authority has been put into my hand. Yes. Now that I have the authority, yes. now that I'm God the Father, now that I'm God the Son, now that I got, I'm God the Holy Spirit, yes. what do you think I can do with your life yes. if you let, if you let yes. me? If I'm giving you the choice, and the choice is now. The world is going crazy right now. The world is all over the place. The government is all over the place. Just like Pilate was all over the place. But it was a dream that his wife had. A dream or a nightmare. What are you going to have? Is yours going to be a dream or a nightmare? What is it going to be? I don't know about you, but make sure that you Jesus. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. Jesus is all and all. Jesus is everything. Jesus is my father. Jesus is my mother. Jesus is my children. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is for you. I present him to you. Oh, have mercy. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody. Listen, my time is up. Or spent, yes. Thank you, Jesus. But I got to ask you a sensitive question. Come on, Pastor. Very sensitive question. And you've heard it already, but I'm going to say it again. Is it a dream? Or is it a nightmare of reality? That's my question. What has he been to you? Yes. Look at 
look at your neighbor next door to you on both sides. Ask them, is it a dream or is it a nightmare? A nightmare of reality. Those nightmares of reality in your dreams, you think they're a reality. But I'm here to tell you today, the true reality is when he got out of the grave. Yeah. The true reality is when the earth reeled and rocked. The true reality is when the moon dripped away in blood. The true reality is that the sun refused to shine. The true reality is that over 500 people got up when Jesus, right after Jesus got up. You gotta get it straight because he rose first. And everybody that was after that, 500 people got up right after Jesus. Imagine seeing an uncle or a not all over again. The reality is that the soldier said, this must be the Son of God. Yes. All this is happening around here. This must be the Son of God. What do you say? Is it a dream or is it a reality? A nightmare of reality. Somebody in the building has been through a nightmare and may be going through a nightmare. Nonetheless, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Thank you. 